While the Grand Teton National Park side is the most well known, the quieter side of those mountains are also pretty spectacular. Don't miss out on these fantastic five things to do in the West Tetons. Number five on our list are a few easy to reach East Idaho waterfalls. Just south of Teton Valley is Swan Valley. Just before you pick up the Teton Scenic Byway and head towards Victor, don't miss Fall Creek Falls along the Snake River. So it's kind of an unassuming little trail right here on the side of a forest service road, but the moment you step out of the truck, you can hear the waterfall off in the distance. Next, on the north end of Teton Valley are Lower and Upper Mesa Falls. This is Lower Mesa Falls. This is the overlook right by Grandview Campground. And so there are actually two Mesa Falls and they were, are very well known in the Teton Valley. Um, more well known than the other waterfall that we went to. So I'm really excited about this. And this one we're just gonna see from a distance. All right, I hear it already. 65 feet tall. It's pretty good size, but this is definitely the smaller of the two falls. Let's go check it out. The volume of water rushing through that lower falls waterfall. Glad we're here at this time of year. And you can see people down there. That is the hiking trail to get you closer. from here is just great. Seeing the amount of water flow down there has got me super excited for both the hike and seeing Upper Mesa Falls now. Both the Mesa Falls are popular stopovers if you're going to West Yellowstone or the West Tetons. So, I mean, this is one of the things to do here to put on your list if you're in this area. Let's go see the other parts. So we made it to Upper Mesa Falls. We are just leaving the parking lot, walking up towards the visitor center, and then it's a quarter mile walk to the observation deck. This is gonna be pretty spectacular. When we left Lower Mesa Falls, we could see some mist in the trees rising in the distance. And the kids were like, what is that? Is that a forest fire? And we think it was the water mist from these falls rising up. That's gotta tell you, this is gonna be pretty spectacular. To give you an idea as to how big this is and why you can see all the mist from so far away, this waterfall is 114 feet tall and 201 feet wide. That giant plume of mist is no joke. You can feel it just coming down the stairs from here. This is like an 85 degree day and it's a really nice refresher when the mist kicks up and hits you. Teton River. 
Bring your favorite flotation device or rent one in nearby Driggs, Idaho. So another way to enjoy Teton Valley and the West Tetons is to get on the Teton River. So that's what I'm going to do this evening here at Bates Bridge. That's where I'm putting in. There are several sections on the river that you can put in. I think maybe even up to six here in the upper Teton River area. If you go past Herod's Bridge, I think it's called, you'll get into Teton Canyon and then it's actually technical whitewater. I'm not going that far. I'm just going one section on the Teton River from here down to Rainy, which is where our campground is. here is the birds and the sound of the water itself. There are a couple sections where it picks up just slightly, but I wouldn't even call them rapids or anything. It just flows a little more around some of the curves. Ooh, I just got a case of adrenaline there because I was moving to the side to avoid some shallows and I came upon on the bank, a mama moose and her baby. They were just coming out of the trees there to come into the river. And uh, the mama made a startled noise, like, <laughs> like, who are you? What is this? And they immediately jumped back into the trees. So I only caught a quick glimpse of them, and I immediately paddled into the middle of the river, also away from the side, because, you know, mama moose might want to defend her baby moose, and you don't want to uh, have a moose charge you, right? So that was back along this bank here. <laughs> Wow, that was neat. I wish I could have seen them a little bit longer from a distance, but that was unexpected and pretty neat. I thought I might see a moose at some point, uh, just not in such a way that startled me and the moose. I expected to see them from a little bit of a distance. just saw our RV through the trees, so I know I'm about to come around the corner. Here we go, home stretch. is the Ashton to Teutonia Trail. We are here at the Ashton to Teutonia bike trail, which is on an old rail line from the Union Pacific Railroad. It was completed in 2010 by the Rails to Trails Conservancy Program, and they have bike trails all over the country. So we were excited to try this one because as you go, you have fantastic views of the Tetons. The thing I'm most excited about is that there are three historic train trestles, bridges, on this trail. Let's do it. Here we go. This trail is a whopping 29.6 miles long, but you definitely don't have to do the entire trail to enjoy it. Biking over the historic train trestles makes for quite the experience, but if you don't want to make a full day of it, we recommend parking further south near the third trestle. Check that one out and bike into the town of Teutonia for some great mountain views the whole way. We tried to do it all and make a full day of it on our e-bikes, but ended up having to turn around after the second trestle due to a storm. Check out our full episode for the whole story. Number two is Darby Wind Cave. 
so worth the hike up here. This is just absolutely spectacular. So the hike we're doing today is to Darby Wind Cave, just south of where the Tetons are on the west side still. And today's hike is going to be 6.3 miles round trip with 1,800 feet of elevation gain, hence the pack to carry Nathan. So it is going to be a challenging hike for everybody, but more so for this guy. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go. begins. Onward. Onward. Ready? Let's do it. Up, 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 and up some more. So we are now crossing through this beautiful field full of wildflowers and you can get this really great view of the mountainsides up past us. So pretty. We just found another nice little area to rest right off the trail. And as soon as we walked out here, we noticed we can actually see the wind cave from here right off this way. There it is. We were speculating how we get over there. I'm hoping we go along some high ridge. <laughs> Don't have to go back down and up. It's definitely pretty when the sunlight hits it. So granted, Kevin has it harder, but I'm giving this one a little bit of help too. <laughs> They're doing great. This last bit is steep and brutal. Almost there. Kevin is not kidding. It is steep. <laughs> yeah, quite possibly one of the more difficult hikes I've done in a long time. But there's the waterfall. Clara, show us. Now we are going to continue climbing these steps on the way up to the cave entrance. So worth the hike up here. This is just absolutely spectacular. This has got to be the best hike we've done in a while. It is quite steep though. But this is your reward. Well, we made it. I'd call this a success. Yeah, and we can feel the wind coming out of here already. Not as much water as I've seen in some videos, but this will actually make it easier to go from the left side of the waterfall to the right, which is the easiest way up into the cave. And what we are going to do now. This sure brings me back to our caving days. It does. There's a lot of breakdown in here. So a lot of rocks that you have to walk over, climb over, and most of them aren't that big. They just move and shift as you're going up. So <laughs> watch your footing. But this is so impressive already. Yeah. Looking up, looking around, looking back out. <sighs> this at is the just valley amazing, yeah. This keyhole opening. That's what it makes me think of, like a keyhole. Yeah. And it's definitely windy. It's definitely much cooler in here. It feels good though. It does. It does. So bring an extra layer. Let's, we're going to go in a little bit farther. Probably not too much farther, but we'll see as far as we're comfortable with, with our given light situation. Right now we don't actually need our lights. There's enough light coming in from outside. 
All right, let's keep going. Back into the dark abyss. I've got my in-cave video studio going on here. <laughs> I think this is about as far in as we're gonna go today. It's uh, starting to get pretty dark. Christine's gonna head down with the kids. I'm gonna run into the back real quick. It's not much further with my light, just to go and a check. Backup. And my backup, which is my phone. And just to go check out this wind blowing hole that the, the cave gets its name from. Yeah, so. another couple just told us it's right there and worth checking out. So, so. might as well. But. It would take a lot longer to get there with the kids. And this is worth seeing. If you can make it all the way up to the cave, do it and come inside. Absolutely. It's very, very neat. So great. All right. There's the hole. Let's go check it out. Wow, that is cold. Well, this is the best I can do for lighting, but I'm standing right in front of this blowing hole right here. I am getting quite refrigerated right here, so it is time to go. Hello. Hey. All right, so we made it out. Take those headlamps off. This was amazing. We can't say it enough. I, I know we say that about a lot of places, but I think this is probably one of the favorite hikes I've done all year. You see the amazing endpoint that you're striving towards from a ways off. And so that just makes it even more like epic. It doesn't disappoint. Once you get here, uh -huh. it's amazing. And then you have the waterfall and the cave and you can go inside and explore. Yeah, this has been so. fantastic. Absolutely. Like west side of the Tetons, you have to come and do this, this hike in Derby Canyon. Number one on our list is the scenic chairlift ride at Grand Targhee Resort, where a gentle ride with great views on the way up leads to a short walk to some amazing views of Grand Teton from 10,000 feet. So we made it to the parking lot, the chairlift's behind us. I think it goes up 2,000 feet. And we still have to go buy tickets, so that is where we're headed next. Let's go. I've got to admit, I feel a little bit out of place just walking up here without a mountain bike. <laughs> we might be some of the only people actually going up the scenic ride without a mountain bike, but hey. also hike to the top or bike to the top and then ride down so the ride down is complimentary if we don't really want to hike <laughs> uphill right now so we're gonna ride it up do a little hike at the top and then ride it back down and half the fun today is the chairlift for us so we got the tickets two adult tickets were 36 dollars the kids are actually still free so that is good if they're six and up i think there is a little bit less of a charge for that but it's time to get on the chairlift Are we up pretty high? This is pretty fun, isn't it? What do you think, Nathan? Good. This is so good, isn't it? Is this your first chairlift? Here comes the mountain biker. So 
I definitely call this a success. The kids love it. The views are amazing. It's a nice, quiet, enjoyable ride up to the top. The weather is fantastic too. It's actually kind of nice with it partly overcast. It keeps it cool. The sign at the bottom said 80 at the bottom, 70 at the top. So not that huge of a temperature difference. And we do have an extra layer with us. So we'll probably put those on at some point, potentially. Yeah. This rocks. Yeah, this is, this is a good way to spend a day. There we go. All right, buddy. All right. Towards right. your right, go ahead. Keep right. right. There we go. Right. Good job. We're gonna do the summit hiking trail now. Let's go. Blankets. So we're at the top of the Dreamcatcher lift now, the top of Fred's Mountain, and we just read that it's 9,862 feet right here. We've got the best viewpoint ever. Check out this view. definitely spectacular. You come around the corner here and you're at the summit with this amazing observation point and this view. in all their glory, the Tetons from the West. Grand Targhee is where you have to go to see these views. Amazing. It is views like this that make me miss living in Colorado sometimes, but thankfully, as a full-time RV here, we could go back there anytime we want. And we get this along the way. Now we're gonna hike back along this ridge to the chairlift. Enjoy the view with us, and then we'll head back down. The hiking trail continues that way. The rain started, the thunder showed up, but we still managed to get everything in. Right, they even shut down the lift, but it's been a great day for us. It's been wonderful being here. I mean, the west side of the Tetons are a must see. So we recommend that you check out this whole area as well. And we'll catch you on the next adventure. Bye. Bye.